And we welcome you back to one of our radio conversations. I'm Stan Houston. I am the leader of the Christian Entrepreneur Network, TCENglobal.org. That's where you find our story and hopefully what we have to offer to you. And one of the things we'd like to do is just in this uh, radio conversation, from time to time, tips and tactics and some strategy, good ideas. But occasionally we want to go just a little bit deeper so that we can learn to think deeply. Because as entrepreneurs, the quality of our thinking oftentimes will determine the quality of the work we do and the quality of the work we do is how well we will do. So uh, today we're going to do just that. And it is a, a bit of an ironic sense that we say that the word we're going to talk about today is uh, one of the best of the F words. Now, usually that term, of course, is a, a pejorative. Some of the most obscene words around seemingly have that uh, connotation. But ironically, what we're going to discover on our program today is that one of the best words is also one of those powerful F words. And uh, Tim Hare, one of our teachers here on the network, will take a little time to help us better understand that... Uh, Good living, good working, good careering often takes place and will happen not in some corporate cubicle of a massive organization, but in a world founded, led, and uh, helping people do their best as entrepreneurs. So, welcome to the program. This is Radio on the Edge. This is the Jesus Entrepreneur Experience and some conversation just for you. And it starts right now. Well, here we go again. We have a little deep learning. And uh, yes, some of the uh, F words where Jesus says, you know, follow me. He doesn't say necessarily believe in me or accept me. He said, follow me. So there's a true, true, perfect one. And uh, he wants us to be faithful. He uh, calls us to be fruitful. He asks us to be forgiving. So there's all kinds of a, uh, those are the good words. <laughs> And they're powerful, and we have to remember that. But our teacher of the day, he comes from us every once in a while, from Sarah Ventures. And someday he will tell us the story of Sarah, Father Sarah, and the name of the company. But Tim Hare, you have a favorite F word, too. I do. It's flourish or flourishing. And uh, uh, although I think most of us probably have some idea about what flourishing is about, I, I like to go to the dictionary, go to the source. And if, if you look at a dictionary or a couple of different dictionaries, you'll see that flourish is to be vigorous, uh, is to be in one's prime or to be successful, to prosper, to, uh, to thrive in growth. Uh, one of the definitions that I really, really love uh, on, on flourishing is to grow or develop in a healthier, vigorous way, especially as a result of a particularly favorable environment. Mm. And I think, Stan, you and I both know that that particularly favorable environment can often be uh, one uh, that, that you and I like to think about in terms of entrepreneurial environment. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> because uh, in an entrepreneurial environment, uh, we have a number of factors that really play toward flourishing as opposed to holding down a cubicle in, in Big Co. That's right. <laughs> holding down a cubicle in Big Co. Absolutely right. Yeah, so, tell us more now. Yeah, so I, I think really it comes back to three things. Uh, entrepreneurial environments provide an opportunity for alignment of our personal purpose and passion uh, with something bigger, of course. Number two, entrepreneurial environments provide an opportunity for risk-taking, challenge, and personal growth. And then thirdly, uh, these types of environments provide a great opportunity for the natural integration of faith and work. Uh, these, these three things sort of comprise the essence of why I believe entrepreneurial environments allow us ultimately to flourish. So let, maybe let's go back and, and unpack these a little bit. Okay. Um, uh, number one is, again, the alignment of purpose and passion. Now, now, you know me well enough, Stan, uh, that, that uh, I like to say that each of us is unique. Each of us has a special story. Each of us was created 
um, in, in a UE. We weren't just, you know, stamped uh, uh, out of a mold uh, off, a, off an assembly line. We, we were uniquely created by the creator, uh, endowed with a special temperament, a special set of gifts and talents. Ultimately in life, of course, we acquire unique experiences. We have unique relationships. So we're, we're unique. We're one of a kind. And in no that regard, clones or commodities no, in God's kingdom. No, 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 not, not at all. And in that regard, you are irreplaceable. I am irreplaceable. Each of us is. And so uh, we have this personal purpose. Uh, often we have a, you know, a sense of passion around it. And an entrepreneurial environment allows us to actually connect that personal purpose to meaningful work in a meaningful way. Uh, again, typically much, much uh, more organically than we might find in, in being part of a large organization. Although I, I will say, you know, that those of us that, that are in larger organizations can attempt to do this on a, say, a smaller scale, a team uh, type scale within a larger yeah. environment. But, but uh, yeah, ultimately, I think, you know, God wants us aligning our sense of purpose with something bigger, and often that is our work. It's where we spend 40 or 50 or 60 hours a week, so why not have a more uh, authentic connection between what we believe is our purpose and, and where our organization is headed? So entrepreneurial environments really provide us that, that opportunity, and, that, and that's really the first element, I think, of, of how these environments support flourishing. Amen to that. Let's go. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Secondly, I think entrepreneur environments provide the opportunity for risk taking. I mean, that's, that sort of goes without saying. It's almost synonymous, right? That uh, uh, by right. definition, we're going to have to be taking risk. We're going to have to be challenging ourselves in the midst of an entrepreneurial environment because, you know, we're, we're doing something different. We're, we're solving a new problem or we're solving in a different way, maybe that existing solution. So, uh, again, by definition, these environments are giving us an opportunity to step out of our comfort zone, step out of the boat, so to speak, and, and take, a, take a risk. Uh, again, that's uh, probably easier to do inside an entrepreneurial environment than it is inside of a, of a big co, in, inside of a big bureaucratic or political organization where the consequences of stepping outside of the boat, if you indeed could even do it, uh, might be severe. <laughs> right. Uh, so... Uh, you know, and, and lastly, you know, these environments really do provide uh, a, a great opportunity for what I call the natural in, in, natural integration of faith and work. Um, uh, you know me well enough uh, in, in my recent book, Risking It, an Intersection of Faith and Work. It really, I, I see these things as as uh, tru truly uh, uh, parts of, of a singular whole. They they aren't uh, compartments. They are. They are, they are meant to be integrated. Uh, I love what Jesus said in John 640, anyone who aligns with him will enter real life, eternal life. And I think uh, he meant that uh, to, to be a, a current possession uh, of ours here and now, not so much uh, only uh, you know, when we pass on. And, and uh, you know, how do we do that? How do we enter real uh, life, abundant life? Well, part of it is, you know, naturally integrating our faith with the rest of our life. And work happens to be uh, a big, big piece of that. Uh, and again, entrepreneurial environments uh, are, are great because uh, they, they give us, uh, you know, they're, they're just, they're, there are less uh, obstacles, let, let's say, to this, uh, this uh, living out the integration of our faith and work in a in a team that's smaller, in a in a organization that's more flexible, in one that isn't laden then with bureaucracy and and politics and so forth. So uh, there you have it. Th those are really the the three kind of core elements that, that I think we'll find in in most entrepreneurial environments that ultimately do lead to much much better odds of of human flourishing. You know, I, I love uh, John 640, and uh, you and I are both because, uh, as I oftentimes say, is I'm kind of a overeducated disc jockey, so I like real language, and uh, I love the words of the message. <laughs> Eugene Peterson says he's more of a communicator than a preacher, and he certainly is, but that expression will enter real life, mm, right. eternal life, and that uh, is such a significant, I love that word, it's real <laughs> And it's right now. Right, right. Uh, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And I think uh, a lot of us would like to believe that what God is all about is, he said, okay, when you follow me, uh, you have uh, full aliveness, and it starts now. It'll be here for eternity, but you don't have 
to die to do it. You can start doing it now. Right, and we and we don't and, want to miss miss that. I, and and frankly, you know, I I grew up in an environment where there was a super heavy emphasis on the the hereafter, and and that's that's yes. that that can be fine in and of itself. But there there is a real danger there that we miss out. Uh, we really miss the boat on the fact that, as you just said, it's meant to be real life right now. And uh, uh, just amazing things can come if we uh, adopt a mindset and an attitude that sees it that way. Uh, wow. I mean, h- here we have this beautiful opportunity to, to not only flourish ourselves, but uh, encourage flourishing in, in those around us and in the environments we're in. And it's meant to be happening right here, right now. You know, that, 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 that wonderful old fi- film, Is This Heaven?, no, it's Iowa. You know? <laughs> right. Uh, you know, is this heaven? No, this is work. But you know what? It kind of feels like it sometimes. Right. And that's great. That's good. Uh, Tim, uh, by the way, uh, I want to thank you, and I want to thank our mutual friend, Hugh Welchel, the Institute for Faith, Work, and Economics. We work together. And uh, he's big into the flourishing word, too. Uh, the three of us are kind of a trinity of a, Put that together and make it a significant part of our work. So we give Hugh and his fine people credit for that. Uh, so uh, in a conclusion, you know, okay, give me the takeaway now because I like this. But, uh, okay, I need something to remember because I'm an entrepreneur and my mind is full. So <laughs> give us give us the final Tim's takeaway on uh, entrepreneurialism will help you flourish. Indeed. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's, it's, uh, simply stated, uh, we get to make choices of the environments that we put ourselves in. And my encouragement is embrace an entrepreneurial environment because it gives you the best odds of ultimately flourishing. And it does that in a variety of ways, which we've just talked about. Uh, but make a choice, make, make a, uh, uh, an intentional choice to place yourself in an entrepreneurial environment because it's going to give you the best opportunity to flourish on a personal level and, again, encourage flourishing in those around you. You know, one young person just asked me, they, they have a, which would, it's an ultimate, you know, corporation cubicle job. And uh, it, it's a, it looks rather attractive to them. You and I know some of the things that are going to happen to them that might not work out. But my counsel to them was, and maybe you'd add to that, is that's okay to experience, uh, but don't make it your home. Mm-hmm. Make it your place. There you go. Uh, would you agree with that? That's it. Yes, I do. Okay. Make it your uh, make uh, make it your place for right now, because God has all kinds of experiences in store for us. But eventually, all of us may find that God has always said, okay, uh, look up to the hills <laughs> and look for something that's bigger and greater and more aligned with my purposes. And uh, he just w- might want to make you in charge of something. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's what he wants to do. Hey, Tim, thank you so very much. Again, good coaching and counsel. How can people get a hold of you? Because... Let me tell you, this guy is very good, and if you need somebody for a conference or just uh, coming together and talking about uh, everything from how we do entrepreneurial to how we perhaps build a business or as a venture capitalist, he can say, well, maybe he can teach us a little bit about how to work that particular part of the deal. Tim, how can they get a hold of yeah, you? E- how can they get a hold of him? There hair? we go. <laughs> Easiest uh, way is probably through an email, Tim at saraventures.com that's s-e-r-r-a ventures.com um, and uh, yeah email away and I'll get right back to you
He will do that indeed. Thank you very much. Best and blessings, Tim. All right. And uh, you are in tune. Same to you. With the Jesus Entrepreneur Experience, the Christian Entrepreneur Network, helping you flourish. And indeed, that is what we want for you. And we'd be grateful if we could have the opportunity to come and visit with you. There's a lot of things we can do. My coaching, my teaching, the presentations, uh, all of us here are designed. We are made by God to create and to help one another. And so if there's any way we can help you, please let us know. RadioEdge77 at gmail.com. RadioEdge77 at gmail.com. Let us know how we can help you. And we'd also love for you to raise your hand and say that you would like to be on the program. Just as a Tim is not only an entrepreneur, he's a teacher. And what I have discovered is that every good entrepreneur, even those who are becoming good, are always learning, seeking how they can teach others. So we want this radio program, this radio conversation, also to be a place where you can come and teach one another, bless one another with the wisdom, insight, and truth that God has given you so that we can uh, seek a better life, build a great business, expand our brand, and make a difference in our world, the world, and perhaps uh, the community that God has placed us in today, the household of faith that we are in and in the business we do. Always close with a benediction, I tell people, and so I'll do just that. All the best and blessings to you. Till next time, bye for now. (music) 